Mount Rainier was suggested as a subject by a loyal viewer, and it feels like the perfect inspiration for today's watercolor painting. I'm starting off with a simple pencil sketch to outline major shapes such as the horizon, the trees, and the mountain. I'm keeping the details minimal for now since watercolors often do the heavy lifting when it comes to textures. Let's start with the sky. I'm going to use a wet on wet technique here. You want a bit of a sheen on your paper. So you lay down that clean water first and work your way around the mountain to preserve that as a dry part of the paper. And then start placing a soft blue along the top and let the water and gravity pull it down to outline the edge of the mountain. That way it preserves the white of the paper and later on in this video you'll see that it helps to capture that snow-capped look. It's always a good idea with watercolor to work from light to dark and preserve the whites where you need to. You can use your brush to coax that color down and get a little closer to the outline of the mountain. Now for the fun part, let's start adding in some of those rich autumn colors. I'm using the Windsor & Newton Cotman Travel Palette. You can see that it's more limited as far as colors. There are 12 colors in this palette. You can mix and match and get all the colors that you would need for this painting. And I've listed all of the supplies that I'm using in this video in the video description below. These warm tones will contrast really beautifully with the cooler mountain in the background. And I'm starting with more broad washes on this part of the painting. There's not a lot of detail yet. We're just laying down the background color and then we'll build on top of this as it starts to dry. Right now I'm using a fair amount of water on my brush because I want larger areas of color. You can see that especially with the green here as it goes over toward the right side of the page. The foreground in this painting really adds depth and helps bring the scene together. You'll see as we continue building up the fall foliage and then the pine trees that they really frame the mountain in the background and draw your eye in toward the center of the painting where the focus is ultimately on Mount Rainier. By the way, if you're not familiar, Mount Rainier is in Washington State and it's a gorgeous place at all times of the year to go hiking and for recreation. It is a gorgeous, gorgeous location. So I'm continuing to build up color here and I'm onto that really warm, bright red. That's the most vibrant color in the painting. It really grabs your attention and lets you know that it is fall. Moving on to Mount Rainier itself, I'm starting with a very light purple. You can see that I dipped my brush in the purplish colored water that's at the bottom of the mixing well, and then picking up a little bit more of that purple pigment from the middle of the well, and using that to start introducing texture to the mountain. The key here is that you want to let the brush create natural jagged edges to mimic the rugged texture of the rocks and snow. I'm keeping this pretty loose. Mountains are all about suggestion and not perfection with watercolor. And the shadows are often cooler and deeper in tone on the side of the mountain that is no longer in the sun. As we work through this painting, you'll see that I'll start to make the right side of the mountain a little bit darker. I am going to frame the mountain with evergreens on each side, so I'll be covering up part of the mountain, but I find it easiest to paint the mountain as a whole and then put the trees over top of it. The trees will be a darker color so they can layer over the texture that we're doing on the mountain on each of the sides. I'm just deepening up that shadow over on the right side. And you want to use colors for your shadows that have a bit of a cool undertone. And when you're focused on areas that are getting sun, you'll use a bit more of a warm undertone. Picking up a little bit deeper purple here 
and starting to introduce more texture. I did a little more than I intended there, so I picked up some clean water on my brush just to smooth that out and diffuse it a little bit on the paper. And then I'm starting to add a little bit more detail in some of the textured parts of the mountain to suggest rock, and then leaving certain places white to suggest snow. When you're working on a painting like this, you might find it helpful to pull up reference photos, either photos that you've taken on a trip, or you can always look up photos online. I often look for photography on Pinterest that I can use for inspiration for my shots. I think I was using about three inspiration photos to create this painting. The foreground of the painting has dried a little bit more by this time, so I'm coming back in and layering in darker shades with smaller detail to suggest depth and texture. I'm using more of the tip of the brush, and this can create little specks and shapes to hint at the individual leaves without overworking the details. You still want to keep it pretty general and focus more on the suggestion of color. Now I'm mixing up a bit more green, and I have a little bit of brown in here as well, just to knock back the vibrancy of the green a little bit more. And I'm just peppering that in throughout the foreground of the painting. I'm covering up some of the white spaces and then being careful to leave a lot of that vibrant red untouched by any other color because I really want that to stand out. Now I'm mixing up and adding a bit of yellow to the painting. I was going to leave a little bit of a path through the bushes here down on the left, but then decided against that. Just know that as you're going through your painting, nothing is quite set in stone. You can always make adjustments along the way. And now I'm starting to refine the details a little bit. I'm darkening some of the shadows in the foreground. This helps to add a bit more contrast and it enhances the foliage with a few sharper details. These little adjustments can make a huge difference in the way that your final painting looks. Now I'm mixing up a green for the evergreens, and I'm swatching a little bit of it here just to see what tone I've got. And then I'm going to draw a single straight line to guide where I place the branches. Pine trees are really fun and easy if you're just starting out with watercolor. You can use it to get the hang of putting in branches and then the trunk, and you're just wiggling the very tip of your paintbrush back and forth across the page to start to create branches. I'm going to go over these with a few different shades of green. I'm dropping in a little bit of a darker color here while that first layer is still wet so that it starts to spread out a little bit. And then I'm going over to the left side with that slightly deeper, darker color and creating some more pine trees over on that side.
Now that I've finished layering the pine trees, I'm going to come back down to the foreground and continue to fill out the section with a little bit more of a deeper green. And I'll let that dry and then I'll go back in with some brown and I'm going to add that to the red just to add a little bit more depth and detail. As watercolor dries, it becomes a little bit lighter. So you may decide to come back into your paintings a few times and add more contrast as it continues to dry. It depends on what kind of look you want. If you want a softer, more unified look, or if you want it to have a little bit more texture and depth to it. Now I'm coming back in with that yellow ochre color again and just filling in that segment. And we've got some darker tones going on in the foreground, so I want to balance that out with a little more detail on the mountain. So I'm coming back in with a deeper shade of that purple that I was using before. It's kind of a purplish gray. And then I'm going to add some more rocky detail and texture kind of scattered throughout the mountain and focusing a little bit more of that darker color in the shadow side over on the right. And with that, Mount Rainier in all its autumn glory is complete. My name is Sarah, and I hope you'll join me again soon for another watercolor video.